Hi, this is John with the Jesus Bible Study. So glad to have you here with us today. Sorry about that background noise that you hear. we got a heater that it's turning off, and it's got a timer on it, so it takes a few seconds to turn off. Uh, it should turn off in about 24 seconds. But uh, we're going to look at the book of Matthew, looking at the life of Jesus Christ, and we're looking at one of his most important parables. We're looking at the parable of the sower. Uh, look, And we'll uh, start with the first verse of chapter 13. It says, On that day Jesus went out of the house, and he was sitting by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat, and he sat down while the whole crowd stood on the shore. Uh, then he told them many things in, par in parables. And if you've got to remember, a parable is a uh, earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And uh, it's going to teach something that is uh, supernatural. But it's going to use things of earth to tell this. And, if, and uh, we need to look at the meaning behind this story uh, that Jesus is going to tell. And he's going to actually going to give the definitions, uh, the uh, explanation of this particular parable. So in here, consider uh, the sower who went out to sow. And he was sowing, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and ate them up. And, of course, what we're talking about a sower, we're talking about somebody that's planting seeds, uh, particularly in this case, uh, most likely wheat. Uh, usually we think of this, you know, with uh, some small seeds uh, that are planted that you don't make a hill and you put don't put the seed down into the earth, but it actually uh, lands upon the surface of the soil and it germinates that way. So, uh, so as he was sowing, I'll just repeat that, some of the seeds fell along the path and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on the rocky ground where there wasn't much soil and they sprang up quickly since the soil was deep. But when the sun came up, they were scorched, and since uh, they had no root, they withered. Others uh, fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them. And basically, Jesus is talking about weeds there. And if you're in a more desert area, like I used to live in uh, Arizona, out there, most of the weeds had thorns, because all the um, plants out there had to protect themselves in that uh, desert environment since um, moisture was very hard to come by and said still others fell on the good ground and produced a crop uh, some 100 some 60 and some 30 times what was sown and anyone who has ears should listen or some translations will say whoever has ears let him hear now uh, that's the parable itself but you say well what's Jesus talking about somebody who's planting wheat and uh, what's the spiritual significance of that but we're going to take a look at that as we go on and uh, this was a this was a question uh, with the disciples so then the disciples came up and asked him why do you speak to them in parables and he answered them because the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you to know but has not been given to them for whoever has more will be given him and whoever has uh, and he will have more than enough but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. For this reason, I speak to them in parables, because uh, looking they do not see, hearing they do not listen and understand. And it says, Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, uh, which says, and he's going to uh, be reciting prophecy that occurred probably about 500 years prior to this uh, from the book of Isaiah, uh, said, you will listen and listen, yet never understand you will look and look and never perceive for the people's hearts have grown callous and their ears are hard of hearing and they have shut their eyes otherwise they might see uh, with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn back and I would cure them but now Jesus goes on to speak now on his own it says but your eyes are blessed because uh, they do see, and your ears, because they do hear. For I assure you, many prophets and righteous people long to see the things that you see, yet uh, didn't see them, and hear the things that you hear, but did not hear them. And then, at this point, he's going to go ahead and explain what this parable meant. And there's very strong spiritual um, information in this parable. And by the way, this parable is very strongly misinterpreted by some people that are claiming to be Christians and claiming to be proclaiming gospel truth. And uh, we'll find out how some false prophets 
are spreading lies, uh, twisting the words of this, uh, this particular parable. But uh, we'll see here in verse 18, it says, You then uh, listen to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, and actually, now Jesus was not just referring to the kingdom of God, but he was referring to uh, the, uh, the word of God being proclaimed. And uh, that might be a problem with this particular translation because other translations will refer to this. I've, I'm sorry, I'm having some problems with some ants here. I'm trying to get into my camera. Okay. Um, this, you know, um, other translations will refer to this as the word of God. And he is talking about the kingdom of God, but he's talking about the growth of the kingdom of God. And how when the word of God is spread, then that grows the kingdom of God. Uh, it says, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. And that's these words uh, that um, are the truth uh, about, um, about the kingdom of God. And uh, it says here, and one, uh, the one that's sown on the rocky ground, this is one that hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but is short-lived. When pressure or persecution comes because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now the one sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but worries of this age and the seduction of wealth choke his word, and it becomes unfruitful. But the one who, uh, the one who's sown on the good ground, this is the one who hears and understands the word and does bear fruit and yields some 100 some 60 and some 30 times what's sown. What happens is when the word of God is sown, people respond to it. Not, not everyone's going to respond to it. And we see that people will respond to it in different ways. We'll see if uh, where their heart is and uh, can that uh, word of God take root in a person's heart. And if they're like that first one there, um, the devil comes and snatches it away. And um, since he doesn't have any depth of, of, of soil in his heart, and um, um, then the, you know he's confused by the devil. The de Satan is the offer of confusion, and uh, they end up not understanding the word of God. And uh, if they're in the rocky ground, they hear it sounds good, and they agree to it. And but uh, that uh, they don't grow root because their their hearts are not prepared for the word of God. And, uh, you know, it's, it's short-lived. And uh, whenever they experience uh, persecution, when someone gives them a hard time saying, uh, you're a Christian, that's terrible, nah, 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 then, uh, you know, they lose heart. And they, they care more for what people think than what God thinks. And, um, or um, they, they have pressure. Uh, they give in to the pressure. And that... Uh, with others, the word is sown with thorns. And there are, you know, Satan basically puts other things in the way to uh, take up that soil that's in their heart. And uh, so uh, they get worries uh, in, in their age. Or they are seducted by wealth. You know, uh, basically they earn a nice paycheck. Uh, they get some money. They want a big, brand new, shiny car. Or they'll want a nice house. Or they'll want a uh, 401k plan where they're earning, you know, potentially uh, thousands, if not millions of dollars for their retirement. And uh, they, they just get sucked in by the things of the world instead of God. And uh, that uh, they lose any root, rooting in the word of God in their life. Uh, but now the ones that hear it and understand what it says, um, then they accept the word of God. They believe in Jesus Christ by faith, and uh, they make him the savior of their life, and uh, they uh, turn away, they repent of their sins, they turn away from their sins, and they turn toward Jesus Christ and ask God to save them, and uh, they become born again, get the Holy Spirit living within them, and then with those individuals, what happens is they go on to share the word themselves, and then there may be a hundred converts with some of them. Others may uh, share the word with others and have 60 converts in their life, or some may have 30. 
So that is uh, powerful. And you notice most people that are Christians never share the Word of God or say that they're Christians. I'll say that. I uh, can't guarantee that everybody who says that they're a Christian uh, are truly Christians. But if the Word of God is alive in them, then they end up uh, most of the time sharing the Word of God with others. And then, you know, maybe a hundred more people will come to know the Lord or 60 more will come to know, or 30 more will come to know. And uh, that's because the Word of God is alive in them, and they believe that the Word of God is transformative, and that it truly can touch your life and change you into a new creation in Christ. And I hope that you're one of those that shares the Word of God with others, uh, that you're one of those that see other people coming into the kingdom of God when they hear the Word and they believe. And Jesus is telling us that this can happen if you truly trust in God, truly trust his word, truly understand, and then you share the word with others, then more and more people will come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and will come into the kingdom. And that word becomes alive, not only in you, but in them as well. Now, um, we're going to go on down and look at another parable. This is the parable of the weeds. And he presented another parable to them. So the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while the people were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. And you notice we had those thorns that came up. And um, uh, this is another situation where the enemy is sowing. And this is the enemy here is referring to Satan himself. And uh, says when the plants sprouted and produced grain, then the weeds appeared, and the landowner's slaves came to him and said, Master, didn't you sow good seed into your field? And where did all these weeds come from? And said, An enemy has done this, he told them. So, uh, do you want us to go and gather them up? Uh, the slaves asked him. And no, he said. said, When you gather up the weeds, you might also uproot the wheat with them. Uh, let both uh, grow together until the harvest. At the harvest time, I'll tell the reapers, gather the weeds and tie them into bundles and then burn them, but store the wheat into my barn. And basically, Jesus is telling us that um, those that uh, those weeds, those are, those are the works of Satan and the people of Satan, and they will face the fires of hell because they're trying to deceive God's people. But in spite of those uh, enemies of God, uh, they're in the church. And yes, the church is full of enemies of God. And um, it's going to be very, very rare that you'll find a perfect church. fact is, uh, Satan works on the church harder than he does uh, the world because he's already got the world. And he's already got the world under his control. But the church is, is turning to the opposite direction of what Satan wants. And uh, they're following God. So he's going to try to mess it up, and he's going to try to sow uh, weeds in, in the midst of the church. And not everybody that's in a church is of God. But um, instead of trying to root those individuals out, that would upset uh, because people gain attachments to individuals. And Jesus is saying that uh, if uh, uh, we root those people out of the church, that uh, it's basically going to harm a lot of good Christian people. So said, so let them come up together, and those good Christian people will sur uh, survive when they hear the Word of God and respond to the Word of God as they are supposed to. And uh, said, uh, then when the harvest comes, uh, when it's time for them to uh, meet God, God's going to separate them. And uh, the ones that are evil... He will burn. He will cast into hell. But those that know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they will survive. They will be um, in God's kingdom with him forever, and they shall receive a great reward. And um, we, we're, uh, I think we're just going to finish up right there. And the question is, how has the word of God impacted your life? Have you been sharing the Word of God because you understand it, because uh, it has transformed who you are, changed you? 
and uh, have you been sharing the word of God with other people? And are you seeing other people come into the kingdom of God? Now, that's the best case scenario. Uh, but now, if you feel that you are in one of these other three situations, then uh, you might want to be praying. You might be saying, God, plow the soil of my heart so that your word can take deep root and uh, so that uh, my salvation can be made complete. The Bible tells us that we're to um, pursue our uh, salvation, work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And uh, so if you feel that you have not had the proper response to the gospel, you have time still at this time to repent of your sins and to put your full faith and trust into Jesus Christ and make him the Lord of your life and to devote your life and your will to Jesus. And uh, you have time to get into the Word of God, the Bible, and uh, just uh, satiate yourself with the Word. You have time to spend in prayer, uh, get, you know, building up that relationship with God. And uh, you have time to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you uh, through his word and directly and uh, leading you into holy living. And you have time for your uh, life to have sanctification uh, where you give up sin. You turn away from sin and you turn toward God and you start doing the things that God wants you to do. As we saw in, uh, in some uh, verses that are to come up. Uh, we're to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind. And as it says in the book of Mark, with all of our strength. And we're to love others uh, as we love ourselves. And when we do those things, we are doing the will of God that Jesus proclaimed uh, to the people just shortly before his death. And uh, if you're doing things other than that, then they may not be of the will of God. So... Um, but, uh, you know, it's very important. Uh, God sent Jesus Christ to the world so that he may save us from sin. And we have to get the sin problem taken care of. And the only way that we can do that is by devotion and faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, if you've not repented of your sin, if you've not turned to Jesus Christ for your salvation, uh, then uh, you need to believe, you need to believe that Jesus died on the cross that he paid uh, the price for our sin. He took the wrath of God upon himself so that we would not have to face God's wrath in eternity and in hell. And that um, he uh, paid the penalty. It cost him his life that he gave freely uh, that uh, we might have eternal life. And uh, he was uh, put into the ground. And then on the third day, he rose again by the power of the Holy Spirit and that he conquered over death and sin. And uh, we need to put our faith in into Christ. And if you believe and you cry out to God and ask God to save you, God will save you. And he will provide you with eternal life in Jesus Christ. And you can become a child of God forever. So uh, uh, we're going to have a prayer and you can pray and ask God uh, to save you. And ask uh, Jesus to uh, uh, that his uh, grace upon the cross can be applied to your sin, can be imputed, so that you can receive the salvation that can come as a free gift from God. So let's pray. Dearly Father, thank you for your word, and thank you uh, for uh, the fact that Jesus Christ has showed us in this parable how the word of God can work in a person's heart and in, and in their life. Lord, I pray that you draw the people that are watching this video to you and that uh, you will plow the soil of their heart, that it will get deep into their life. Lord, we pray that they will repent of their sin, turn away from their sin, and that they will turn toward Jesus Christ and they will believe that Jesus died on the cross and that he rose again and that he has the power over sin and death in their life and that they can be saved. The Bible tells us that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I pray that many people will believe on Jesus and gain that salvation, and then they will join the kingdom of God, and they will love God and love Jesus, and they will love other people, and they'll have the Holy Spirit living within them, 
and then they will proclaim the word of God, and so that many more will come into the kingdom. That uh, when they tell other people about the word, that 30 uh, other individuals, or 60, or 100, or even more, may come to know uh, the, the love of God, and the power of Jesus Christ, and, and how he has had impact on their life, uh, we pray that they will share the word of God and will have, and that they will, uh, at, with the people that they share the word with, that their lives will be impacted the same and that more and more people will uh, be added to your kingdom and uh, that your kingdom will grow as you told us. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for your kindness and your gentleness. And Lord, we pray that many will respond to your gospel and make Jesus Christ Savior and Lord. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for today's lesson. And share this lesson with other people. This is a very important lesson uh, from a very important part of Scripture. And uh, this will transform people's lives when you share this. And uh, share the Word of God with as many people as possible. Uh, get yourself some Bible tracts or get yourself uh, some uh, uh, you know, Bible testaments and uh, share the word with others. Uh, share your personal testimony and uh, allow people to hear the word of God. Uh, you can be a lay preacher. You can share the word of God just like a preacher would uh, with your friends, neighbors, co-workers, various individuals. So until next time, this is John with the Jesus Bible Study uh, saying that you need to get into the word of God and let the word of God get into you and share it with other people so it can get into them too. So until next time, this is John saying bye.